Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So, so far we have actually covered, I think, uh, uh, till up to part 4 of section C, correct? Now, in fact, part 3 of section C and part 4 is related to your holding company, correct? And that is your consolidated financial statements. We will do this question, don't worry about that, as you can see I have already solved this one, but uh, at the same time before that, I will pick up quickly these questions and these questions, uh, that is section 5, are related to section 5, but unfortunately and so many times I have already told you, so many prints and so many misprints that it has given virtual headaches. I have never seen so many mistakes in a question paper, especially of a professional body. Very disgusting to see that. For example, in this particular question itself, you will find it has consumed, I do not know, actually, you are, you have to study just for 30 minutes, but at the same time, in order to solve this paper, to be very honest with you, I am spending 4 to 5 hours. And I am talking about one section. There are so many misprints. And sometimes I feel actually I have committed a mistake by starting the series. But anyway, but now I have taken it as a challenge. So that is the reason actually why others haven't actually come out with any solution. That could be one possible reason. And the importantly is that when institute has given the answer, why they are not coming out with the full answers. That is the very another very annoying factor. Uh, anyway. We pick up this particular question. This question, I was looking at IPCC question papers. This question was from there and then only I was able to trace out that this particular thing is wrongly misprinted. It is 1-12-2017 given here. It should be 2020. Again, your this answer is wrong then. Correct? If you look into IP, IPCC group 1 question 2015, similar question is there. First of all, only difference is that over there, the figure instead of 870,000, I think there there was 7,80,000. So, while noting down, it seems the printing mistake has been again done. Instead of writing 7,80, they have written 7,80 and accordingly, they quickly computed the answer, which again is wrong. I will tell you the correct answer. This is unfortunate. But at the same time, when I come, it seems that Institute has also learned from its mistake. Because when I was looking at December 2022 paper, it was completely in contrast to it, quite easy, very easy and can be done within what we call a span of three years. But this paper was hell of a paper. Anyway, one uh, question number one from uh, given below, following information of Nikita Limited, goods of 60, this question is from your AS9. To be very honest with you, if you have gone through accounting standard AS9, most of these questions are contained even in our accounting standards, notes also and of course in the lectures. First of all, it is given that goods of rupees 60,000. Goods of 60,000, just wait, actually the spin, this no, of late is creating problem. Goods of 60,000 were sold on 20th of 3, 2001, but at the request of the buyer, these were delivered on 10, 4, 2021. We will see that we have to find out how much revenue we have generated and how much revenue we have to in fact recognize by the accounting year 31st of 3, 2021. So you must have noticed actually that 60,000 goods we sold on 20th of March 2021, just prior to the end of the current accounting year. However, buyer requested us that please deliver the goods to us on 10th of April. So, even though in this case, buyer is asking us to deliver the goods, but it is not our mistake. So, I have written also here for you, if you want to note it down, you can. Revenue shall be recognized if buyer formally accepted the goods and in this case, delivery, delivery of the goods is delayed at buyer's request. So, that is the reason, even though goods are delivered after the end of the current year, still we are going to recognize 60,000 worth of revenue. So, in this case, you are going to recognize this 60,000 worth of revenue. And secondly, now the next question is, on 15th of January 2021, on 15th of January 2021, goods of 1,50,000 were sent on consignment basis. 20% of the goods are unsold and lying with the consignee. Now, this is a simple part. When we send the goods on consignment, the rule is that, when goods are sold by the cons consignee, especially to the third party, so 
those goods will be recognized as revenue and goods which are still with the consignee should not be recognized as revenue. So out of 1,50,000, 20% are still with the consignee. Quite obviously, 80% of 1,50 will be recognized. Correct? This is the guideline. Should be recognized as revenue when consignee sells the goods. So in this case, out of 1,50,000, 80% of the goods have been sold, obviously. So 80% will be equal to 1,20,000. So 60,000, 1 lakh 20, 1 lakh 80 is already done. Now here is the big mistake. I personally presume that institute must have given answers, at least those who might have attended this question, correct, at least institute have given them marks because it's a mistake, it's a printing mistake on part of the institute. And it's a big mistake on one, see here, 1 lakh 20,000 worth of goods were sold on approval basis on 1 12 2017 here it is written it should be 1 12 2020 please check this date now the rule with respect to goods sold on approval is already known to you but still i have written here revenue is recognized that means full sentences with respect to goods sold on approval basis Revenue is recognized when revenue is recognized when approval is received or period for approval has been expired. So if suppose I have given you three months time, for example, here in this question, what is happening? I am selling the goods to you on 1-12-2020. 1-12-2020. I have already told you, please change the date. Current year is starting from 1-4-2020 and shall end on 31st of 3-2021. So on 1-12-2020, I sold the goods and these goods have been sold on approval basis that if it comes up to your satisfaction, you please approve us. And if it doesn't, then you can return it to us. The period of the approval was three months. If I will compute three months, this is 1st December. So that means this particular period will end on 1st of February 2021 three months period will expire here correct now question says that just prior to the question further says that period of approval was three months after which they were considered sold quite obviously buyer sent approval for 75 percent of their goods on 31st of january 2021 just one day before when the time period would have elapsed just one day prior to that that is 75 percent goods were approved Obviously, those goods which have been approved will be considered as sold. So, I will take 1,20,000 into 70%, 75%, that is 90,000. Then, with respect to remaining goods, now remaining goods are worth rupees 30,000. And no approval or disapproval is received for the remaining goods. Now, I have already told you, because your period for approval or disapproval has expired on 1st of February, and if the period expires, expires then even the remaining goods will be considered as part of sales because i have already told you revenue is recognized when approval is received a period for approval is expired so with respect to remaining 25 percent worth of goods we did not receive the approval within the stipulated period of time so quite obviously we are going to recognize that mean even in this case we are going to recognize full amount one lakh twenty thousand so your answer will increase by 1,20,000. They have completely neglected this particular paragraph, it seems. Correct? And further it is written, apart from the apart from the above, the company has made cash sales of 8,70,000. So, and they have given a trade discount of 5%. So 8,70,000 minus, these are cash sales, obviously it will be recognized. 8,70,000 minus 43,500, 8,26,000. So whatever total now you will get, this total will be your answer. Now, such a big mistake and so many mistakes, even in the question, why I am refraining myself from doing actually this question on holding company, even that particular question, it seems actually, it seems has got some mistakes. So many mistakes, it is becoming difficult, not only for you, but for us also. That is the problem. Now, in this question, fortunately, in this particular question, there is no printing mistake. And this is very easy question. X Limited entered into an agreement with Y Limited for sale of goods costing Rs. 2,40,000 at a profit of 20%. At a profit of 20% on sale. See, cost of the goods, here I have written, cost of the goods, it's 2,40,000. So 
And since profit is 20% on sale, 20% on sale means sales is 100, 20 is margin, cost will be 80. So rate of profit on cost will be 20 by 80 or 1 by 4. So if you are going to apply 1 by 4 to 2 lakh 40, you can get the profit because this is at cost. So you have to convert the profit margin to cost. That means you must have sold the goods costing 2 lakh 40,000 at rupees 3 lakh. But further, what is given to us? The sale transaction took place. The sale transaction took place on 1st of February 2021. On the same date, X Limited entered into another agreement with buyer Y Limited. The agreement is that he will repurchase the same goods at rupees three lakh twenty thousand on 1st of August 2021. As per rule, as per AS9, when seller agrees to repurchase the goods, then it is not considered as a part of what we call sale it is considered as financing transaction this is what i have i have written over here when seller agrees to when seller agrees to repurchase the goods then it is treated as a financing transaction so whatever amount we have received it will not be treated as revenue is it clear to you or not so this will be your answer and this is very interesting question and again the big mistake Again, the same question is also there in my study notes, you must have noticed. Correct? Only thing is that figures are different in our, what we call notes. Otherwise, the theme of the question remains same. Again, this particular question, what mistake is there? And it consumed hell of a time of mine to come out with the most appropriate answer. If such mistake doesn't look nice, especially at a professional level, and especially if it happens to be a final level. Something must be done. At least four or five times, they must check actually and see to it that uh, proofreading is absolutely to the hilt so that no printing mistake creeps in. Anyway, SB advertiser obtained advertisement rights for one day World Cup cricket tournament to be held in May for 1,200 lakhs in February 2021. Now I tell you in this particular case tournament is to tournament to be held in the month of may 2021 for 1200 lakhs as you know as now asia cup is going to be held and after that world cup is going to be held so media rights are actually auctioned and prominent companies like sony tv star tv Correct. Similarly, Channel Line, Sky Sports, they actually vie with each other to buy the what we call rights. So, same thing has happened. SB or advertisers obtain advertising rights. That what will be advertising will be done during the matches or after the over. You must have noticed so many ads actually flung in. Correct. So, SB advertisers obtain advertising rights for one day cricket tournament, which will be held on May 2021 for 1,200 lakhs. So, in order to obtain such rights, we have to pay to the organizers. Okay, 1,200 lakhs we are supposed to pay. So by 31st of 3, 2020, they have paid 500 lakhs to secure the advertising rights. So what is the balance amount remaining? Balance amount is 700. And here again, it is written 300. It should be 700. The balance 700 lakh was paid on April 2020. Anyway, Fortunately, this particular line or this particular printing mistake will not affect the final answer. Only thing is, the only problem is that your final answer, in my opinion, again is not correct. Correct? This is the problem we are facing. By March 2021, they procured advertisement for 75% of the available time for 1,500 lakhs. Now, suppose I have purchased the rights. Correct? Or a particular company, SP advertiser, have purchased the rights. Of course, their cost is 1,500 lakhs, sorry, 1,200 lakhs to purchase these rights. However, they sold that 75% of the total, see, total advertising time is 100%, let us say. Out of that 75%, uh, by March 2021, that means by the end of the current accounting year, by March 2021, they procured advertisements for 75% of the available time and they must have received 1,500 lakhs against the same. That means all our time slots were sold, the total time slots, out of that 75% time slots were sold out and for 1,500 sold out. Actually, this line is just for confusion. The advertisers, that means our customer, 
who bought the time to advertise their products. The advertisers paid 60% of the amount by that date and balance 40% will be received. Actually, whatever customers are going to pay, it is irrelevant in the sense or when they are going to pay, it is irrelevant for the final answer. So 60% see actually our customers have bought 75% of the advertising time. So they will pay us 1,500 question is telling that 60% they paid by the end of the 31st, 3, 2021 and 40% they will pay us in the month of April next. That is 1st April or simply April actually it is written April 2021 that means after the end of the current accounting year they will pay 40% but this slide is not going to affect. Why it is not going to affect? Because in case of advertising, how what is the rule for recognizing the revenue? If you have gone through my study material AS9, especially the in the last page, I have written all these rules. But problem is that you hardly go by those. That is the only problem. I have written over there this particular sentence that revenue in case of advertising is recognized when advertisements are published or released. Irrespective of the amount received from my customer, the point is that I am SP advertisers. I will recognize the revenue correct when I am going to release the ads. That is important. So in case of services as we know, because advertising we are providing service. So in case of services or in case of advertisers revenue will be re recognized when I am going to release the ads when, or when I am going to reflect those ads on TV or media channels, whatever it is. Now question says that, we have already sold out 75% of the time. Now question says that advertisement for balance 25% was procured in April 2021. So when current year ended next month started. So balance of the time that is 25% was also sold and we sold it for 300. So total 100% time slots have been sold out now once for 1,500 earlier and remaining 25% for 300. So total revenue generated by us is equal to 1,800 without an iota of doubt. Now question is that how to recognize this re revenue? We are going to recognize this revenue when we are going to provide the service. Actually service will be considered as provided in case of advertisement when we will release the ads. Now question says that 25% of the advertisement advertised time is expected to be available in the month of 2000 in the month of May 2021. So out of total time which we have 25% of advertisement will be released in the month of May 2021. So 25% revenue you are going to recognize in the month of May and this 450 which they have asked in the month of June. They have asked in the month of June actually first of all. So actually this answer is as per AS9 revenue will be recognized for May 2021 450 lakhs. How? I have already told you total revenue is 1800 and I will compute 25% of that. That is equal to 450. 450 out of 1500 I will recognize 450 in the month of May and remaining out, one, remaining revenue is 1500 minus 450 is 1050. This I am going to recognize in the month of June because 75% of the time now it is given and balance in June 2021. That means 25% advertisement will be released in the month of May and 25 and 75% of the total advertisement will be released in the month of June. So 75% of total revenue is 1050 which I am going to recognize in the month of June and in the month of May I am going to recognize only 450. These are your current answers. That is the reason almost in every question and almost in every answer it seems there is printing mistake. This is the problem we are facing. You must understand this also. So fortunately you can do section 6 by yourself and in the next session I will do your December 2021 and then I will stop what we call this series, correct? Uh, and then I'm thinking of giving you some revision videos, uh, super quick revision vi uh, videos with respect to various chapters. If time allows me, you must be, you must have noticed actually I'm busy with so many courses, FR English version, Hindi version, CFR English version, Hindi version, so they consume cell of a time. And
and uh, yes this question is simple at least you should be in a position to do in this particular question what is happening bs limited acquired machinery on lease lease term is 5 year fair value of the machine is 45 lakh and useful life is 15 years annual lease rentals payable at rupees 10 lakhs for 5 years the lessee will pay us 10 lakh in the first year 8 lakh in the second year 6 lakh 4 lakh 2 lakh so it is known as series of annual lease payments and implicit rate of return is 15 percent implicit rate of return means rate agreed by lesser and lessee mutually now question has question is simply asking you state with reason whether it is operating lease or finance lease we know what is finance lease and we also very well are aware of what we call operating lease a finance lease is one where all the risk and rewards are transferred importantly but most important thing is that present value of minimum lease payment covers almost whole of the what we call cost or fair value of the asset cost or fair value of the asset is 45 lakh so i will have to compute the present value of the minimum lease payments or simply the lease payments to see to it that whether it is covering whole of 45 lakh and when we say whole it means 100 percent and even if it will cover 90 percent or more then it will be presumed that it is covering substantial part of the cost of the asset then it will be considered as finance lease but if it fails then it will be considered as operating lease so present value factors is given to you at the rate of 15 percent correct uh, for different years so first of all what i am going to do i am going to write here lease payments present value factors then present value so lease period is five years so one two three four five i will write i will write the lease payment which i am going to receive 10 lakh 8 lakh 6 lakh 4 lakh and 2 lakh i will multiply it with the respective years present value factors and then i will multiply 10 lakh with this figure 8 lakh with this figure and so on the total will be equal to 21.9719 now this 21.9714 lakhs will be divided by 40 lakhs into 100 now nowhere it is coming to 90 percent it is even less than 50 percent if, if i am going to compute the percentage so it will be considered as operating lease correct now in case of operating lease you must have noticed and i have done this standard at great length and correct and with great intensity and this question so many times and very simple question so many times we covered during our session but anyway in case of operating lease we know that actually uh, lesser retains the what we call ownership of the asset lesser the owner of the asset retains the ownership while in case of finance lease the moment he is going to deliver the asset on lease he will loses the ownership right at least till the lease period now because lesser in case of in case of operating lease happens to be the owner that when he remains owner so he will provide the depreciation question is also asking this and rate of depreciation is given to you as 6 into 2 by 3 percent so 45 lakh is the cost and this much depreciation you will provide 6 into 3 18 plus 2 20 by 300 it will be so if i will compute 45 into 20 by 300 it is equal to 3 lakh this the this question contains correct answer and as far as this question is concerned it is also correct now honestly speaking let me tell you i have solved this question and i will show you this even this particular question i have already solved for you but again i have to say there are lots of mistakes and what were lots of printing mistake in this question paper but i will discuss this i have already told you i have already told you and here is the solution okay i will show it to you this way actually i want you to open down the paper also okay first let me discuss the paper this one with that we will finish this series of what we call december 2021 correct i'm not having any other paper i traced the site even in the site i could not find december 2023 paper to be very honest with you or any other paper if you have paper 
I'm having December 2021 and 22 papers. If any one of you have paper, then kindly send that, those paper at the mail which is mentioned in the what we call description box. Correct? Besides these, if you want to get them sorted. In this question, which is given to you, Balance sheet of S limited and S limited as usual is given to us. Equity share capital 2 lakh 40, 2 lakh 40. We have capital reserve. Then general reserve 40, 32. Profit and loss account. Trade creditors. Bills payable. Tangible fixed asset. Importantly, the tangible fixed asset of S limited is equal to 1 lakh 74,960. And one important point is given with respect to this. This item. The important point here is given that in point number D, depreciation on fixed asset had been charged at the rate of 10% per annum on written down value basis, there being no addition or sale since 1-4-2018. Question actually in point number D states that on 1-10-2018, fixed assets and investments, fixed assets, and investments of S limiteds were undervalued by 5% and overvalued by 100%. On 1-10-2018, we will see that later on, it will be considered as date of control, but I will explain how later on. On the date of control, fixed assets and investments were undervalued. That means fixed assets were found undervalued by 5%, so I will have to increase the value. The investments were found overvalued by 100%. That means I will have to decrease the value of the investment by 100% of S limited. Now the main point is that in this case, how to how to find the undervaluation or overvaluation of fixed asset? Because question is telling that depreciation on fixed asset had been charged at the rate of 10% on written down value basis, and there is no addition or sale since 1-4-2018. Now please pay attention in this case. Now, fixed asset which is given to you is 1,74,960 and this balance sheet, this balance sheet is of 31st 3, 2021. That means in this question, we will see the story is beginning from 1,4,2018 and the story is ending on 31st 3, 2021. So if the story is beginning on 1-4-2018, then first year will end on 31st 3-2019, second year will end on 31st of 3-2020, and obviously the third year will fall here. On 1-10-2018, we will see later on that it will become our what we call date of acquisition or date of control. And question is telling that on this date, first of all, I have to find out what is the value of the fixed asset. Then only I will apply 5%. So what my point here is that, first of all, because this value is on 1,74,960, which is given to us, this is on 31st of 3, 2021. So try to understand what I am trying to make you understand. Suppose, suppose on 1,4,2000, suppose on 1,4,2021, value is 100 let us say value is 100 and my rate of depreciation on written down on 142018 i will make correct on 142018 suppose value is 100 so when i will reach the end of the first year i will charge depreciation at the rate of 9 my written down value will be 91 instead of giving you a straight line they have given written down value so much of what we call it is almost it looks very difficult that how come one can complete this paper in three hours i doubt even the those who have framed i doubt whether they can also what we call complete it within three years that uh, within what we call three hours anyway again i will take the 10 percent 9.1 that means when i am going to reach the second year look at here also when i am going to reach the second year the value will be equal to so depreciation 100 sorry it is equal to 91 uh, it is 10 it is 90 so next year depreciation is 9 so 81 will become value At the end of the second year, value is 81. Then for the third year, I will again charge depreciation at the rate of 10%, 8.1.
that means when I will reach the third year, this asset which in the beginning was worth rupees 100 will be equal to this much. How much? 100, sorry, 81 minus 8.1. That is equal to 72.9. That means if value at the end of the three year is 72.9, that means in the beginning it was 100. And value as on at the end of the third year, one lakh seventy four thousand, one lakh seventy four thousand nine hundred and sixty. So, what was my value of tangible fixed asset on one four two thousand eighteen? On one four two thousand eighteen. So, I will multiply one seven four nine six zero into hundred divided by seventy two point nine zero. Correct. So this will be equal to how much? Let me compute first. 174960 into 100 divided by 72.90. That comes to 2,40,000. So 2,40,000. That means on 14,2018, on 14,2018, this asset was worth rupees 2,40,000. Is it clear to you or not? Now, the problem is that this asset was found undervalued by 5%. So, I have to increase it by 5% now. So, 5% of 2,40,000 will be equal to how much? It will be equal to 12,000. At least this answer is correct and matching. And this is the only answer which will match. But to be very honest with you, profit on revaluation of asset 12,000, this answer is matching. But actually, even this answer is wrong. Let me tell you. Why this answer is wrong? Because this revaluation is not done. This is the problem I am facing. Correct? You can understand my predicament also. And for anybody's predicament, who, who would actually, whosoever is going to attempt the paper. Actually, this is the value in the beginning. 2,40,000. And they have computed 5% of this 12,000 and shown it as an answer. But the fact is that revaluation is not done on 1-4-2018. Revaluation as per point number D is done on 1-10-2018. So logically the answer should have been, logically I am talking about, logically your answer should have been, but I will go by 12,000, but I am simply trying to tell you, logically your answer should have been, if on 1-4-2018, Value is 2,40,000. So what will be the value after 6 months? That is on 1,10,2018. So I will charge depreciation for 6 months. If I will charge depreciation for 6 months, so 2,38,000 is the value on 1,10,2018. And logically, I should compute 5% of this. And this should be considered as revaluation. Correct? So... 2,38,000 into 5%. Logically, 11,900 should have been the correct answer. So, these are the types of mistakes and so many mistakes. And that is why the intensity and the zeal to solve the question actually automatically dies then, honestly speaking. Anyways, what further things are given in this question? So, I was talking about investment. And second important point is with respect to investment of S Limited. Now, investment of S Limited is 10,000, which is given in the question. As, as you can see, 10,000. Question says that it is 100% overvalued. It is 100% overvalued. means you have to decrease it by 100%. So, its value is increasing according to the answer given is 12,000. Its value will increase. Later on, we will take it as revaluation increase. And its value we will consider as decrease. Sorry, investment. Its value we will consider as decreased. So its value is decreased. Correct 10,000. Then after this next item which is given to us, a goodwill is also given, a goodwill existing in the books of S Limited already. And... Uh, After this, you have been given investment. This is our investment, correct? 
and uh, trade data is 12.30, bills receivable, these are all, are all items and with respect to inventories again, one important point is given, I will show you here itself. With respect to inventories, the question says that, here it is written. First of all, it is written here, trade creditors of H Limited include 4000 due to S Limited. We need not require to prepare the complete consolidated balance sheet, but if we would have prepared, then we would have subtracted it from creditors and debtors both 4000. Further, it is written trade debtors of S Limited. That means S Limited must have sold some goods to S H Limited, and it is given that trade debtors of S Limited include rupees eight thousand for sale to H Limited. Because in this case, because in this case S Limited is selling the goods to H Limited, it is considered as downstream transaction. It is considered as, sorry, upstream transaction. One is downstream transaction when H will sell, but here S is selling, so it is upstream transaction. It is upstream transaction because S is the seller. S must have sold 8,000 worth of goods to H Limited. Now, question is telling that out of that, first of all, further it is given, Trade debtors of S Limited include 8,000 for sales to H Limited invoiced at cost less 20%. Again, to confuse you, it is given that S Limited sold these goods at a loss of 20%. And rate of profit is given to you in this manner. Cost price, uh, uh, cost less 20%. So if your cost price is... 100 then goods are being sold to you at the rate of 80 that is the point is so at this price goods are being sold to you so you will compute the rate of loss on this price that is it but first of all let me compute the remaining goods question further says that 80 percent of these goods are still in stock i have so many times told you while doing the consolidation that First of all, we need to compute the remaining goods because unrealized profit or loss is always computed on remaining goods. Now, I will compute remaining goods. 20% of the goods are remaining. So, 20% of this is equal to 1,600. Normally, we compute unrealized profit. Here, we will compute unrealized loss. Correct? This is unrealized loss. What will be the amount of loss? Remaining goods are this much. So I will apply 20 by 80. That is 1 by 4. That is equal to uh, 20 by 40. That is equal to, I think, 400. That is equal to 400. So remaining goods are, invoice record, 20% of these goods are still in stock. So only 20% of goods are in stock. We will compute the unrealized loss that is equal to 400. Is it clear to you? As you know, unrealized profit is subtracted from the stock while preparing the balance sheet. Unrealized loss will be added. Number one, then I will compute the share of both holding company and minorities because this question is not related to NDS to be very honest with you. This is why I wonder actually when you are moving to NDS why the questions from AS are being asked. But fortunately it seems actually slowly and steadily they are realizing because in December 2022 paper I did not find so many mistakes or at the same time so many awkwardness. So holding company, parent company non-controlling interest is known as minorities so we will compute the share of holding company whatever share of holding company is there of this and we will subtract it from consolidated pnl and minority share will be subtracted from minorities minority interest or non-controlling interest as nowadays we call them so this is the point and with respect to inventories i talked about and then cash at bank is also given to you. Cash and bank. Further, it is also given with respect to contingent liability of H Limited. Contingent liability of H Limited is given. Bills discounted, not yet matured. 
that means any bill if I have discounted prior to the maturity date is considered as a contingent liability. So H limited might have actually discounted some bills. So it is a contingent liability of S limited. It is not going to impact anything. Don't worry about that. But now we come to the main area of this particular question. Question says that on 1st of April 2018, now please pay attention, on 1st, this is 10 of late, it, I will have to change it seems, next time I will change it. Of late it is creating lots of problem. On 1st of April 2018, H Limited acquired from shareholders of S Limited 10,000 shares of 10 each in S Limited. Just pay attention. And second problem sometimes this mouse actually creates. Just pay attention. Look over here carefully. On 1-4-2018, how many shares we have acquired? How many shares we have acquired? 10,000 shares. It is given in the question. So 10,000 shares we have acquired. Correct? Just wait for a while. Actually, this is not a problem we are facing. Sometime you now in electronic gadgetry, this is the only problem. The pen will not work, then it becomes difficult. You see, it is not working. Just allow me a second, I will check it whether it have works, start works or not. Start working or not. That is the problem. Mm -hmm. Again, it is not working. Fortunately, but still I doubt. Mm -hmm. This will ruin my session. I do not know why. Okay, it seems actually some mistake has crept in. Just trying to overcome that, but... No, it is not happening. You can see this borderline. Actually, they are not moving out. And if it will not move out, I will not be able to get anything from here. Okay, then I will wrap up this session in the next, don't worry about it. I will do this question and I will do it uh, at uh, uh, great uh, length and so that you can understand as far as entry cases are concerned, even though we may not be able to match all the answers. Remember one thing and why I have given you some hint because some printing mistakes are there and there are so many printing mistakes. Not only one problem is that as we saw in case of what we call accounting standard questions printing mistakes and printing mistakes and these are creating problems. So anyway, now I will meet you in the next session and in the next session I will not only do this question but I will start the summer 2022 paper. I will try to finish it quite early. Correct? So shall meet you in the next session. And sorry for this technical problem. <laughs>